I'm Josh with Woodland Mills, and I'm here today with the Woodland Mills Automatic Bandsaw Blade Sharpener. A lot of Sawyer see value in owning the sharpener for two major reasons. Uh, the first reason is extending the usable lifespan of the blades that you do buy by allowing you to sharpen them up to five times. As an example, if we were to take a 10 pack of blades and sharpen each blade five additional times, that's going to give us 50 new blades to work with or five additional 10 packs. The second major reason is convenience and knowing that you've got sharp blades where you need them and when you need them to cut. You put those two together and Sawyers quickly see a return on investment from ownership. The sharpener comes packed in the box we see here. So because of its size and its weight, it can be sent out by common courier. Uh, if it's bought after the fact, if you purchase it with a sawmill, we're just going to put it right on the crate and send it out freight included with your sawmill purchase. It takes about 30 to 40 minutes to put the sharpener together. I've gone ahead and assembled one, and now I want to show you its various components and the way it's used. The sharpener is designed to work on 12 volts. So it comes with the wires and the alligator clips to hook it up to a 12 volt battery of your choice on your location. So this gives us the ability to use it remotely and it also makes it universal worldwide. Uh, to hook it up to the battery, we do provide the alligator clips, which will clip on the positive and the negative. And then we also have a 15 amp main fuse uh, protecting the control box itself. And then we have another half an amp fuse protecting an internal motor inside the control box. Those replacement fuses, we do provide one of each and it comes with the sharpener in the box, just so you have them on hand. You'll see the control box is mounted to a base plate and that base plate can either be bench mounted with a couple of mounting holes we provide uh, and the arms will still fit on it or you can install the legs so that you can use it remotely or set it off in a corner of the shop and not take up your bench space. Uh, we've got two controls on the control box. So we have a control for the advancer and a control for the grinding head. And I want to start by talking about the grinding head. So the grinding head has multiple adjustments. The first being uh, the hook angle or the tooth angle of your blade that you need to account for. And we have indexing locations at 7 degrees, 10 degrees, and 14 degrees to make that quick and easy. But you can also set it at custom angles as you desire, and there's a locking knob to hold that in place. With the grinding head in the down position, you'll see the knob on top is used to adjust the depth of the cut. As we turn that clockwise, we're going to pull the grinding disc out of the cut. And as we do it counterclockwise, we're going to lower it down into the cut. And that's going to determine how much material we take off uh, for the whole length of the cut along the gullet. Uh, and that adjustment is done here. Now this shaft sits down with an acorn nut on the bottom into another adjustment tab and that runs on the arm that's driven by the cam. And what that does is it gives us the length of time we spend down in the gullet making the grind. So by adjusting that tab, we can determine how quickly we exit the gullet and get out of the way for the next tooth. Next, I want to talk about the blade advancement. So with an automatic uh, sharpener, this is going to advance the blade one tooth at a time. And it does that with the forwarding arm here. And the adjustment for the pitch of the blade or the length between the teeth is done with this knob here. And that lets us set it so we can push the blade just the right amount so that the grinding disc comes on the face and takes off the desired amount uh, between four and eight thousandths of an inch uh, to get that sharpened and get that blade cleaned up. Uh, with the independent controls, we can use uh, the advancer only during setup and it allows us to really fine tune the grinding head uh, functions or the grinding head adjustments so that we know we're not going to take too much material off the blade when we first start that grinding disc up. So we're going to do a few dry runs 
and then once we know we're in the right spot to take off the right amount of material, we can turn on the grinding head. Before we get our first blade on and we start using it, the disc that comes with the sharpener is going to have a square edge. And we're going to have to profile that edge to meet the shape of the tooth to gullet transition of the blade manufacturer we're using. We send the profiling stone, it comes in the box. We also have um, a template to kind of get you started, a rough starting template. Um, but every blade manufacturer is going to have their own shape and you're going to use the profiling stone to match that shape. And again, that all comes in the box. The outrigger arms you see here support the blade as it goes around. Uh, there's bearings on the edges to promote it rolling through and not getting caught up as the advancer pushes the blade and does its job. Now that I've gone over uh, the features and the function and what it's going to do, I want to go over a bunch of blade terminology so that we're all clear about the, what the various adjustments are doing so that you can get it set up properly for the blades that you're going to sharpen with the sharpener. So when we talk about blades, we have four major blade parameters. The first blade parameter is going to be the width of the blade. And the width uh, is going to be the measurement from the tip of the tooth to the back of the band. And this sharp sharpener can take inch and a quarter to inch and a half blades. The next parameter is going to be the blade pitch. And that's the distance between the tips of the cutting edge it's also described as teeth per inch in a different metric. Um, but this sharpener can handle three quarter inch up to inch and a quarter blade pitch. The next parameter is going to be the tooth angle. And that's the angle that the tooth cuts into the wood at. And we've got a standard adjustment for seven degrees, which is used in hardwoods and frozen woods. We have a 10 degree, which is a general purpose, and then a 14 degree, which is generally used in softwoods. As well, you can set it in between those settings and lock it in place if you have a custom setting in mind. Uh, the thickness of the band or the thickness of the blade itself, we can handle 035, 042, and 055 thicknesses just by adjusting uh, the blade clamping mechanism. We can adjust for the gullet, the shape of the gullet, um, and the way the tooth meets the gullet uh, in various ways. We can use the profiler and the adjustments of the grinding head to suit all those. But we're, it's important when you're setting this up, not only to do the face of the blade, but also follow through the gullet of the blade and clean that gullet out. And what we're cleaning out of there are stress cracks that can start and then propagate down through the back band if you don't clean them off uh, as you go. When you're grinding uh, the face of the tooth and the gullet, you're looking to take off you know, four thousandths to eight thousandths of an inch. So it's really just a light grind. You're not digging in through the tooth or the gullet and you just want to make sure you're getting a new face and a new clean edge on those two surfaces before you exit the tooth. Blades are good for about five sharpenings. Again, that's an average. Uh, if you take off the minimum, you might be able to push that a little longer. If you take off a little more in your grinds, you're gonna shorten the, the amount. Depending on where you are in that range, that's gonna determine how many sharpenings you can put on a blade before you've worn it out. As I go to put this blade on, I'm gonna put it on the two back guides first. And then I'm gonna pay close attention to where the weld is. And what I want to do is place the welded gullet just past the grinding disc so it doesn't become part of the automatic process. The reason for this is this tooth spacing uh, with the weld in there and the variation um, between blade manufacturers, the tooth spacing can be off slightly and it will not be consistent like the rest of the blade. So by putting it in front, I can isolate it and do it uh, as a manual process right at the end. So I'm gonna start just after and stop it just before it goes through the push. 
Um, now with the blade in place, we've got to put it uh, between the washers and the back rest here. And there's washers on both ends and that keeps it aligned and tight. And then we also have a pressure plate here and there's an adjustment. Uh, so depending on the thickness of your band, you're going to be able to adjust this to hold it, not tight because the, the blade has to slide through this, but you want to hold it snug against the face of the back so that when we're grinding, it doesn't wiggle around or move during the process. So now with the advancer and the separate control, you're going to see how it clicks it back over the tooth and pushes it one tooth forward. And then with this adjustment here, I'm going to be able to make the adjustments depending on the pitch of the blade that I'm working with. This happens to be a 7 8 pitch blade. And then we can start to bring uh, the grinding head down. Now I've set the hook angle. I've set the hook angle already to match the blade. This is a 10 degree blade and I've got it set up at 10. So I can bring this down manually and we're going to line up that acorn nut with the adjustment. And this is where we can use the two controls to kind of run the blade advancer and keep an eye on the grinding disc and then start fine tuning it so that before we turn it on and start making those uh, the grinds, we know we're going to be taking off the right amount of material. So the, the disc is coming down and I've got to start adjusting this to get closer to the face of the tooth. So I'm pushing too far right now. I'm going to back it off. I'm going to come down. And what we want to do is just take that four thousandths of an inch off the face of the tooth. So that's what we're setting up for now. And I'm right there now. So the next adjustment is going to be the depth of the wheel down into the gullet. And that's done by this knob up here. So with turning that off, I can put the, the gullet right underneath and then I can start letting this down and then I'll run it through another cycle to see where we're at. getting close there now. And what I'm looking for is I want the disc to just just meet it and drag slightly. And then we can do the next level of fine tuning once it's running. That looks great there. So the next step here is going to be to turn on both the discs. I'll get the safety glasses on and we'll see how we're doing and we'll do the fine tune on the first couple of cycles so that we're just taking off the right amount of material as we go through.
We demonstrated there how the auto stopper hits both the advancing motor and the grinding head motor. And I want to show you how this gets installed and where it gets installed on the blade. So once we've started the process and we've got the blade maybe 15 teeth past the grinder, we're going to count back approximately 10 teeth and install the auto stop. And then that's going to turn off the whole operation just before we get back to that welded gullet. And that's the one where the, the spacing can be off, so we don't want to run that through the automatic process. The total process to sharpen here was about 20 minutes in time. Now you've seen how simple and efficient our sharpener is and how it can be a valuable asset to your milling operation.